Hello everyone, let's have a look at Tanner's Wines. Now Tanner's Wines are a smaller operator in the UK. Um, they've got a turnover of 18 million um, with you know, 2 million quid in the bank and they've got about 100 staff. Just look at my notes here. So let's have a look at what they've done on the sust sustainability plan. The, what I'm expecting to see here is, um, is the same problems I see with lots of, of smaller companies that um, we deal with at, at Nistic is that they they don't have the budget or the resources to put into a full scale sustainability analysis okay so we've got systems that, that kind of make that easy for people but if you haven't got those systems you know if you're not aware of them or for some reason you didn't want to use a, a one of the computer systems then the challenge is getting the level of detail in the plan and getting firm plan with hard numbers and that's what i'm expecting to see when we go into tanners but notwithstanding, let's take a look, shall we? So let's dive in. Uh, this is Tanner's Wine Sustainability Plan. I've just bashed it into Google. And, you know, the first link we've got up here. Uh, well, let's just have a look at their accolades. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, you know, very impressive. Look at all those. And so I, I know some of these awards quite well, and some of them are genuinely hard to get, so... You know, well done, well done them. But look, sustainability and environmental policy, Tanner's Wines. Um, down here, lots of things about what they're doing. Um, the bits that concern us, I think, are down here. They've highlighted it. Eliminate plastic bag usage. Build a carbon neutral warehouse. Be carbon neutral. Keenly investigate new ways of packaging wine that are more sustainable than glass. Okay. So that sounds good, that doesn't sound so bad. Um, notice, by the way, there's no numbers in there in terms of the size of their emissions, okay? Let's go into the Environmental Management System and Social Responsibility Plan. Bit of a mouthful, but you know, it's there, let's have a look. So Tanner's Wine Merchants, Environmental Management System and Social Res Responsibility Plan. So to start with, have a bonus point, Tanner's, for having one of these. Um, you know, not everyone's got one. They do take some work to put together. So well done on producing it. Um, James, well done. Um, and isn't there someone else down here? Yeah. Christina Album, sustainability lead. Um, well done, guys. You know, putting these together is not easy. Um, I know for a fact. So well done for having it done. Now let's have a look what's in it. Um, we're going to have a look at environmental. That, that's our bag, the carbon. So a shipper of wine from around the world, dot, 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 dot. And... All the things they're going to do with warehousing and distribution down here. Two new rules to provide additional insulation. First time I've seen that in anybody, um, any sustainability plan that I've seen is talking about insulation. And it's such an easy win. You know, it's pretty boring because there's no flashing lights or there's no sort of, I don't know, there's nothing you can point visitors to. It's all hidden. But insulation makes such a difference. You know, it's such a difference. It cuts the, the heating costs down significantly. So well done on that. Uh, reduced need for external heating and cooling down here. LED lighting. Yeah, well, as I say, that's pretty standard. Uh, recycling pallets. Again, that's pretty standard. These days. water buttons. Don't often see that. Wine boxes, etc. Down here. It, the comment I would have, I've got things on warehousing and distribution and shipping. Other areas down here as well. And I think you go back down here, we talk about supply, suppliers and the supply chain. The problem I've got with it is is the problem I was expecting is that they look to me as if they're not running a platform which can give, you know, hard measurements and hard accurate figures about their um, carbon use. Because throughout this, I might have seen it and Tanner's, what's that person's name? It's a lady, doesn't it? Christina, um, you know, Christina, if I've missed it, please point me in the right direction. Um, but I can't really see anything in here that is numbers based. So this is, I think, excellent start in terms of listing things that Tanners want to do. And they're good things, you know, ensure that health and well-being of the staff are always, etc. But you could kind of come up with this list in a committee on a, a Thursday morning over a cup of coffee um, and there's no, you know, what am I not seeing? I'm not seeing what our carbon emissions are, how they're broken down between scope one, scope two, scope three. The biggest thing, the single biggest thing in here 
there's no analysis of supply chain. And for a company like Tanner's, all of the things that you've got on the screen here are what's called direct emissions related, i.e. the things that Tanners do themselves, but it totally well, it ignores is maybe too strong a word, but it doesn't really focus down on the supply chain. And if you've got a company that buys a lot of stuff and sells it, then that's the area to look at. You know, it's, it's the highest sort of area of priority out of everything is really looking at the supply chain and, and driving the carbon out of the supply chain. If we looked at, um, I was looking at a company yesterday, um, there you go, Heathrow Airport. So not one of my clients, uh, but Heathrow Airport, I was looking at their sustainability plan, 99.8% of their carbon footprint is scope three, it's supply chain related. Okay, and what they can influence themselves, the direct emissions, um, often scope one, scope two, are such a small part of it. And I think that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a concentration on, you know, the electricity, the gas and stuff like that, which is good. It's, it's not bad. It's a good thing. But I'm not really seeing any th sort of analysis of the wider picture. And I'm certainly not seeing any numbers. Um, so well done for doing it. I think it's brilliant. The fact that, you know, James and Christina have, have put this together to make it better. It should really include some form of, of hard numbers hard targets and plans on how they're going to get from here to there and reduce their carbon um, emissions down in, in whatever manner they see fit that they set targets for. So, where are we? Uh, pretty good overall. Um, detail, three, three out of five. I mean, there, there is, you know, what we're seeing down there is a, is a list of things that they are going to do. That's, that's a good thing. So three out of five for that. Um, quality of plan, um, I originally wrote it down as a four because, you know, four out of five, because th there's some good things in there. There's absolutely some good things in there. But you know what? If, if you don't look at supply chain, you're going to get marked down. If you don't put any numbers in, you're going to get marked down. So overall, that's a two out of five on the quality of plan. Actions taken, yeah, not bad, actually. You know, it lacks the structure of a rigorous plan, the sort of thing you get from a deanistic plans, but there's quite a, quite a rigid sort of roadmap about what to do and how to do it. But yeah, it's not bad. Three out of five fractions taken. Um, transparency, two, no numbers. It makes it really hard to sort of look at things objectively and scientifically. Um, effort, four, yeah, not bad. You know, they've always put effort into this and, and my overwhelming sort of view here with 14 out of 25 is that yeah you're on the right lines just just turn up the rigor turn up the analysis part get yourself a platform bit one of ours or you know the deanistic platform or, or one of the others out there and then start using that to kind of put some some absolute scientific numbers based plans and targets in place okay um, but apart from that pretty good 14 out of 25 is certainly a lot better than we've seen from some of the other people we've looked at. So well done. And, and if you want an example of, of what good looks like, um, you know, I hate to keep banging on about it and I'm not related to them anywhere at all, but have a look at the Berry Brothers and Rudd report, which is just superb. And that gives you kind of a steer about where things could go. All right, I hope that was useful and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.